Today, I have an Amazon Dash. If you don't have one of these yet, you should. It's a $5 Wi-Fi button that can do just about anything. Let's get to it. If you've never heard of the Amazon Dash before, it's a simple device made by Amazon. Its original purpose was to be placed next to an item you use a lot of, say something like paper towels. And then when you're running low on that product, you push the dash. And the next day, Amazon sends you more paper towels. But these devices are capable of a lot more. Thanks to a guy who goes by the handle Maddox and the HTTP bridge he built called Dasher, you can intercept the Dash's button push message on your local network. And then Dasher can fire a message to any HTTP webhook. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use the Dash with Home Assistant and Ift. First, you'll need to get the Dash configured on your Wi-Fi network. To do this, open the Amazon app on your phone. Then tap the menu icon on the top left, select your account, and then under Dash Devices, select Set Up a New Device. Follow the on-screen instructions to set up the Wi-Fi. When you get to the last step, to select a product to order when you press your Dash button, don't select anything. Press the X icon in the top right and cancel the Dash setup. After using the Dash for a while, I noticed that you get a standing notification from the Amazon app that you haven't activated your Dash. You can turn this notification off by going to the Dash button settings and then turning off all the notifications. Okay, so let's install Dasher. The first thing we'll need to do is to log into a Raspberry Pi using your poison of choice. On my Windows computer, I like to use PuTTY and I'll initiate an SSH connection and log in with the Pi account. To install Dasher, I'll use these commands here. To make your life a little bit easier, I went ahead and wrote a consolidated version of Maddox instructions and put it on my website. You should definitely check out the original instructions on the GitHub page, or you can use the instructions on my website, so you can just copy and paste these commands. The first one we'll run is sudo apt-get update, then sudo apt-get upgrade. When prompted, I'll hit Y. Then I'll run sudo apt-get install libpcap-dev, and then I will run sudo apt-get install npm. Then the next thing I'll do is to clone the Dasher repository, which it looks like I already cloned, but to be thorough, I'll go ahead and delete that right quick and I already clone it. Okay, so once we have the repository, I'll go ahead and navigate inside of the folder using the cd dasher command, and then we will install dasher using the command npm install. Okay, so if everything worked okay, you shouldn't see any error messages here. This looks like it ran correctly, so nice. So the next order of business is we need to find the MAC address for the Amazon Dash. All you'll need to do is first make sure you're in the Dasher folder, which we are, and then type the command script forward slash find underscore button. And then while it's running, go ahead and press the button on your Amazon Dash. With any luck, you'll see something pop up with a MAC address and it'll say manufacturer Amazon Technologies Inc. This string right here is your MAC address. Sorry I blurred mine out. I know that makes this annoying, but you can't really recycle a MAC address, so. Okay, so I'll go ahead and copy that MAC address and put that into this notepad document for now. Now, the next thing we'll need to do is to configure Dasher. To do that, make sure you're in the Dasher folder and then type sudo nano config forward slash config dot json and then press enter. On my website and on Maddox's GitHub page, there are example configuration files. The first one I'm gonna show you is this if method. To use it, go ahead and copy that into PuTTY, and you'll notice that there's a couple fields that you need to change. The first one is the name. I'm calling this tweet because I'm gonna create an if that tweets when I press the button. Dumb, I know, but it demonstrates the point here. So you can make the name anything you'd like. This MAC address, I'll go ahead and make it the one that we just found. The last thing we'll need to change is this URL, but before we can do that, we need to create an if applet. So we will go to if and log in, and then go to my applets, and then say new applet. So for the this side, I'm gonna say maker, and receive a web request, and then the event name, I'm gonna call tweet. Then I'll say create trigger. For that, you can make this anything you'd like. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and use the Twitter component, and I'm gonna say post a tweet, and the tweet text is gonna be my Amazon dash, just posted this tweet 
for my new tutorial video. Nice. Okay, then I'll say create action. After that, I'll make sure it says what I want. If maker event receives tweet, then post a tweet to app or automation. Say finish. Okay, once that's set up, we'll need to get our maker API key. You can find that by going to search and typing maker, then clicking the maker icon, then clicking settings. And then this long string right here is the API key. It's everything after the use forward slash part. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy that API key, go back to Putty, and where I say your maker key, I'm gonna delete that, and I'm going to right click to paste that entire API key. I'm gonna use the event name that we said earlier, which I think was tweet. Yep, if receives tweet, so that is what goes here. And I think that's it. So we'll go ahead and exit this by pressing Control X, and then save it by pressing Y, and then enter. So now Dasher should be set up to post a tweet when it intercepts a button push from this Amazon Dash. So let's see if it works. To start Dasher, I'm gonna use the command sudo npm run start. And I need to make sure I'm running that from the Dasher folder, which I am. So go ahead and run that command. And it looks like it's running okay. It says tweet added, which is good. That means it likes the configuration file. And if I press this button, we'll see if it works. It does work. It says tweet pressed. Okay, so now the moment of truth. Let's see if it worked. If I go back to my applets and I click my applet, it says run one time. That's a really good sign. Then we will go to Twitter to see if it works. And there it is. Nice. Okay, so we have ift working great. But I do want to show you how you can use the Amazon Dash to work with Home Assistant. To do that, you would change your config to look something like this. Under name, you can change it anything you'd like. The address is the MAC address for your Amazon Dash. And then under URL, you'll want to type the IP address for your instance of Home Assistant. In my case, because I have encryption and a DNS set up, I will use the address HTTPS colon slash slash my duck DNS address port 443 forward slash API forward slash services. And then you can call any service you'd like inside a home assistant. For this, I'm using switch forward slash toggle, which will toggle switch, but there's light turn on, light turn off, light toggle, and like you can call a script or a scene or anything that you'd like. Under headers, you'll type the password for your home assistant instance. And then in the body, you'll type any JSON information you need when you call that service. For toggling a switch, you'll need an entity ID, which I put here, which is switch.megadesk.leds. So with that set up, I'll go ahead and hit Control X and then Y and Enter to save it. I didn't make any changes, so it's all good. And then I will go ahead and run Dasher again. And if everything works, we'll go ahead and press the button. And hey, lights turned off. This is a really good chance for me to show you the limitations of the Amazon Dash. As you might have noticed, there's a little bit of latency here. In my setup, it's about five seconds from the time that I push it to the action happens. That can get annoying if you're using this for a light switch. So my recommendation would be to stick to scenes or events where that latency is not gonna be an issue. The other thing that you might have noticed is I can only press this button about once every 10 seconds. I can't press it more often than that because it goes into this weird timeout sleep mode. So yeah, don't expect these to be a very high performance button. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is to set up auto start for Dasher. That way it starts automatically when we reboot the Pi and we don't have to do this manual starting and stopping process. To create the auto start script, first I'll run the command sudo nano forward slash etc forward slash init.d forward slash Dasher. Then I will copy the script off of the GitHub page. You need to select this raw template file. Hit Control A to select the entire script. Then going back to Putty, right click to paste it. Then I will go back to the Dasher GitHub page. I will copy this part of the script, Control C. Then in Putty, I will delete these first couple lines all the way down to user. You can delete an entire line, by the way, by pressing Control K. And then once I'm there, 
I will right click, put an enter in here between user and name. I will press control X and then Y and then enter. And then I'll run these two commands here, sudo chmod755 and sudo update-rc.d. Okay, so now that I've done all of that, I will restart the Pi. And hopefully when that comes back up, Dasher will be running and I can use this without having to think about it. Okay, so it's been a couple minutes now. I think my Pi is restarted, so I am gonna go ahead and see if this button works. So, ready, set, go. Dun, dun, it works. So yeah, I think that's about it for this one. Getting started automating things with the Amazon Dash is super simple thanks to Dasher. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below. And yeah, I'm very excited about my next project. I was hoping to get that out before I did this video, but I ran out of time and I didn't want to leave you guys hanging forever, so I figured to get this up before I get the next one out. The winter just makes it so hard to do anything outside. It's crazy. Anyway, until then, happy automating. Cheers. <laughs>